expansions from both the Far Harbor and the Nuka World DLCs as well. And before we get into this video, it's important to mention that to a certain extent, one faction may or may not be the best for your playstyle. One faction might provide better perks or weapons and armor for how you play the game, while the other faction might not. You may also decide to pick a certain faction based on how you roleplay, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm picking my choices here because I believe these factions to be the best choices for the easiest time in survival mode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the vanilla game factions. Just to warn you, I might surprise you with my recommendation. So from Fallout 4's vanilla game, you have the Brotherhood of Steel, the Minutemen, the Institute, and the Railroad. The Brotherhood provides the player with a vertebrate signal grenade earlier on than the Railroad does, which is going to allow you to fast travel in survival difficulty. However, if you're planning on siding with another faction later on, you can take advantage of the Brotherhood of Steel until towards like the end of the game. You can also join the Minutemen, do the Minutemen ending, and still have access to vertebrates. The Brotherhood also allow you to obtain T-60 armor fairly early, and while you don't have very many Brotherhood-specific settlements, you can always use the Minutemen or Nuka World Raiders for settlement building. And another nice thing about the Brotherhood is that you get access to unique T-60 armor pieces by completing their side quests, and if you go far enough into their quest line, you can get a free T-60 medic pump and a T-60 jetpack. Uh, both of these are nice if you don't have have a high science perk. You can also get the X111 compound, which will instantly heal rads in survival mode and can be quite useful if you're in a pinch. The Brotherhood does have its downsides though. Uh, many of the perks I've mentioned can be used before you have to ally with a specific faction for the end of the game. So for example, vertebrates can be used as long as you don't make the Brotherhood of Steel hostile. Plus the faction's main companion, Paladin Dance, ends up leaving the Brotherhood of Steel during the Blind Betrayal side quest mission. So if you side with the Brotherhood towards the end of the game, you lose your faction companion. Some of the unique items that you get later on aren't as amazing, and a lot of the good Brotherhood uniques are acquired upon joining their faction. So, for example, something like the Righteous Authority Laser Rifle is going to be better than the Sentinel's Plasma Caster. The thing is, is that the instigating effect on the Sentinel's Plasma Caster would work better on a silenced weapon as opposed to being on a Plasma Caster. And the Plasma Caster would probably benefit from, like, a rapid legendary effect or something else. Now, if role-playing is important to you, you may also take issue with the Brotherhood ending, as it is fairly severe. Then there is the Commonwealth Minutemen. Within the first hour of the game, the Minutemen's first quest provides you with access to T-45 power armor. While this is the weakest of the standard power armor models, it's useful for your first couple of levels, and assuming you know where all of the fusion cores are early on, I could see you easily using this armor until level 13 or so when T-51 becomes available. Another nice perk of the Minutemen is their artillery cannons for settlements. The nice thing is that both of these can be acquired regardless of what ending you ultimately choose, and they are some of the Minutemen's most positive features. The one unique thing about the Minutemen, though, is Preston Garvey as a companion. Provided you equip him with better weapons and armor, he actually has one of the better companion perks in the game, and it is a perk called United We Stand, and it boosts damage resistance by plus 20, which isn't that great, but it allows you to deal an additional 20% damage when you are quote-unquote outnumbered, and this is defined by the game as having three or more opponents fighting you at once. So it might be worth it for you to max out Preston's affinity. The problem with the Minutemen is that you can side with the Institute, Brotherhood, or Railroad and receive most, if not all, of the benefits that the Minutemen provide. The Minutemen also provide a limited set of exceptionally unique weapons and armor from quests and vendors, and for this reason, it might actually be a good idea to remain allied with the Minutemen if possible, but not totally complete their questline. Uh, I would say once you get the castle, 
you should attempt to choose one of the other three of the factions in the game. There's also the Institute. The Institute allows the player to travel from anywhere in the Commonwealth back to the Institute. Now, on the one hand, this ability is quite nice, as it allows you to travel from a very central location on the map. Unfortunately, the Institute's teleporter doesn't allow them to fast travel anywhere on the map, like you sort of can with the Brotherhood or Railroad Vertebrates. This is a shame, as having the ability to teleport anywhere would make the Institute a phenomenal choice for a faction. Another issue that I have with the Institute is their faction companion, X688. While he definitely looks cool, his companion perk at max affinity is pretty weak. Uh, Shield Harmonics boosts energy resistance by plus 20, and you'll find that this is almost negligible depending on how you've built your character. Ultimately, I would say this companion perk is among one of the least ideal perks in Fallout 4. The Institute is also not a settlement-based faction, so you've also got to consider that you're going to have to keep the Minutemen around for that as well. The Institute ending also wipes out the Brotherhood and Railroad, and that is a guarantee, but you also have the potential to wipe out the Minutemen too. And while this may be cool from a roleplay perspective, I ultimately think preserving the Brotherhood or Railroad is going to be more useful especially if you're concerned with a safer form of travel. Plus, you still get the Minutemen with both of those factions being around, where you may not have this opportunity if you chose the Institute. And finally, there is the Railroad. The Railroad eventually acquires the Vertibird Signal Grenade, however, it is after their version of Nuclear Options. So, once you take out the Institute and the Brotherhood of Steel, you will get access to their Vertibird Signal Grenades. Presumably, you could continue to use Brotherhood Vertebrates until you ultimately decide to betray them for the Railroad, and then you could complete all the Railroad quests and get this functionality back. Uh, the Railroad also has access to some really nice stealth weapons, like the Deliverer, and you can also buy the Tinker Tom Special if you're so inclined to do that. Um, if you don't use Power Armor, you can also acquire the Ballistic Weave mod, which improves the armor rating of various pieces of clothing. Deacon is also a good companion for stealth characters. Deacon's cloak and dagger boost sneak attack damage and make stealth boys last 40% longer. This is going to be useful if you're constantly using silencers to deal with various enemies throughout Fallout 4. Otherwise, the Railroad's ending is slightly less severe as it does result in the destruction of the Brotherhood of Steel and the Institute, but I would say of the four endings, it is the second highest good karma ending, with the Minutemen ending being the highest karma ending in my opinion. Now, the question is, which vanilla game faction is going to be the winner here? Now, I know some of you guys are going to be upset, so I'm going to apologize in advance, but I'm actually going to place my bets on the railroad. Uh, now, that said, the Minutemen is going to be an extremely close second, or you could even argue that it's going to be a tie, depending on your playstyle. Um, the determining factor here is going to be whether you want to use power armor or not, and whether you plan on using weapons with silencers or not. Uh, I would say if you don't use power armor and you're using silencers, you should go with the Railroad. Otherwise, stick with the Brotherhood as they have access to good power armor pieces and various other good weapons. And as I've mentioned previously, both factions can be allied with the Minutemen, so you should be able to complete most of the Minutemen quest line up to the castle, and then you can join either the Railroad or Brotherhood from there. I would say the big thing in my decision was Deacon versus Paladin Dance. Of the two, I think we can all agree that Deacon is going to be a more useful companion, and you'll find that Deacon's Cloak and Dagger perk is better than Dance's Know Your Enemy perk. You also have to consider that you'll have access to Deacon throughout the entire game, while that's not the case for Paladin Dance. But simultaneously, if you're not playing a stealth character, you may find you prefer a companion both from another faction as well as one that isn't allied to any faction. So for example, you could join the Brotherhood and then use Preston Garvey. I would ultimately say that if you choose the Railroad or the Brotherhood, you're getting the best perks for travel, and those Vertibird signal grenades and survival are extremely important. As for the worst faction to choose, I think it's clearly the Institute. 
at least with the Minutemen, you can use the Vertebrates that the Brotherhood has if you ally with them, but in comparison, the Institute's teleportation ability is lame. Uh, it would be one thing if you could teleport all around the map, but you're currently stuck teleporting back to the Institute. From there, you're forced to walk across the map to get anywhere. And I also think X688 is a bad companion as he has a bad perk. Shield harmonics just isn't as good as either Deacon's Cloak and Dagger or Preston's United We Stand. 